Grand Peterhof Palace in Peterhof, Russia. The Peterhof Palace, is a series of palaces and gardens located in Petergif, St. Petersburg, Russia, commissioned by Peter the Great as a direct response to the Palace of Versailles by Louis XIV of France. Originally intending it in 1709 for country habitation, Peter the Great sought to expand the property as a result of his visit to the French royal court in 1717, inspiring the nickname of the Russian Versailles. The architect between 1714 and 1728 was Domenico Trini, and the style he employed became the foundation for the Petrin Baroque style favored throughout St. Petersburg. Also in 1714, Jean-Baptiste Alexander Leblond, likely chosen due to his previous collaborations with Versailles landscaper André Lenoter, designed the gardens. Francesco Bartolomeo Rasterly completed an expansion from 1747 to 1756 for Elizabeth of Russia. The palace ensemble along with the city center is recognized as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The end of the Great Northern War resulted in the Treaty of Nystad in 1721, ceding much of the Swedish Empire's claim to the Baltic Sea to the rising Tsardom of Russia. Peter the Great already began construction of his new capital St. Petersburg in 1703 after successfully capturing Swedish provinces on the eastern coast. This strategic location allowed Russian access to the Baltic Sea through the Neva River that flowed to the Gulf of Finland. The island of Kotlin and its fortress Kronstadt northeast of St. Petersburg provided a gateway and commercial harbor access owing to the shallowness of water closer to the city. Throughout the early 18th century, Peter the Great built and expanded the Peterhof Palace complex as a part of his goal to modernize and westernize Russia. The dominant natural feature of Peterhof is a 16-meter high bluff flying less than 100 meter from the shore. The so-called Lower Gardens, at 1.02 km squared comprising the better part of Peterhof's land area, are confined between this bluff and the shore, stretching east and west for roughly 200 meter. The majority of Peterhof's fountains are contained here, as are several small palaces and outbuildings. East of the Lower Gardens lies the Alexandria Park with 19th century Gothic revival structures such as the Capella. Atop the bluff, near the middle of the lower gardens, stands the Grand Palace. Behind of it are the comparatively small upper gardens. Upon the bluff's face below the palace is the Grand Cascade. This and the Grand Palace are the centerpiece of the entire complex. At its foot begins the Sea Channel, one of the most extensive waterworks of the Baroque period, which bisects the lower gardens. The Grand Cascade and Samson Fountain. The Grand Cascade is modeled on one constructed for Louis XIV at his Chateau de Marly, which is likewise memorialized in one of the park's outbuildings. At the center of the cascade is an artificial grotto with two stories, faced inside and out with hewn brownstone. It currently contains the modest museum of the fountain's history. One of the exhibits is a table carrying a bowl of, artificial, fruit, a replica of a similar table built under Peter's direction. The table is ridged with jets of water that soak visitors when they reach for the fruit, a feature from Mannerist Gardens that remained popular in Germany. The grotto is connected to the palace above and behind by a hidden corridor. The fountains of the Grand Cascade are located below the grotto and on either side of it. There are 64 fountains. Their waters flow into a semicircular pool, the terminus of the fountain line sea channel. In the 1730s, the large Samson fountain was placed in this pool. It depicts the moment when Samson tears open the jaws of a lion, representing Russia's victory over Sweden in the Great Northern War, and is doubly symbolic. The lion is an element of the Swedish coat of arms, and one of the great victories of the war was won on Street Samson's Day. From the lion's mouth shoots a 20-meter high vertical jet of water, the highest in all of Peterhof. This masterpiece by Mikhail Koslovsky was looted by the invading Germans during the Second World War. See history below. A replica of the statue was installed in 1947. Perhaps the greatest technological achievement of Peterhof is that all of the fountains operate without the use of pumps. Water is supplied from natural springs and collects in reservoirs in the upper gardens. 
The elevation difference creates the pressure that drives most of the fountains of the lower gardens, including the Grand Cascade. The Samson Fountain is supplied by a special aqueduct, over 4 kilometers in length, drawing water and pressure from a high elevation source. The Lower Gardens the expanse of the lower gardens is designed in the formal style of French formal gardens of the 17th century. Although many trees are overgrown, in the recent years the formal clipping along the many alleys has resumed in order to restore the original appearance of the garden. The many fountains located here exhibit an unusual degree of creativity. One of the most notable designs is entitled The Sun. A disc radiating water jets from its edge creates an image of the sun's rays, and the whole structure rotates about a vertical axis so that the direction in which the sun faces is constantly changing. The same bluff that provides a setting for the Grand Cascade houses two other, very different cascades. West of the Grand Palace is the Golden Mountain, decorated with marble statuary that contrasts with the riotous gilded figures of the Grand Cascade. To the east is the Chess Mountain, a broad chute whose surface is tiled black and white like a chessboard. The most prominently positioned fountains of Peter Alf are Adam and Eve. They occupy symmetric positions on either side of the sea channel, each at the conjunction of eight paths. The Grand Palace The largest of Peter Alf's palaces looks truly imposing when seen from the lower or upper gardens, but in fact it is quite narrow and not overly large. Of its approximately 30 rooms, several deserve mention. The Chesma Hall it decorated with 12 large paintings of the Battle of Chesma, a stunning naval victory of the Russo-Turkish War, 1768-1774. These were painted between 1771 and 1773 by the German artist Jacob Philip Hackert. His first renderings of the great battle scenes were criticized by witnesses as not showing realistically the effect of exploding ships, the flying timbers, great flames, smoke, and fireballs. Catherine II assisted the artist by exploding a frigate in the harbor of Livorno, Italy, for the benefit of Hackert, who had never seen a naval battle firsthand. Hackert also did not research the actual positions of the Russian and Turkish forces during the battle so the scenes depicted are somewhat fanciful, but do effectively convey drama and destruction of naval warfare. The East and West Chinese cabinets were decorated between 1766 and 1769 to exhibit objects of decorative art imported from the East. The walls were decorated with imitation oriental patterns by Russian craftsmen, and hung with Chinese landscape paintings in yellow and black lacquer. Another room, positioned at the center of the palace, bears the name of the picture hall. Its walls are almost entirely covered by a series of 368 paintings, mostly of variously dressed women, differing in appearance and even age, yet most were drawn from a single model. These were purchased in 1764 from the widow of the Italian artist P. Rota Uri, who died in St. Petersburg. Other Features the Grand Palace is not the only historic royal building in Peterhof. The palaces of Montplaisir and Marly, as well as the pavilion known as the Hermitage, were all raised during the initial construction of Peterhof during the reign of Peter the Great. The lower gardens also contain a large greenhouse, and in the Alexandrian Park stands the Palace of Nicholas I. Like the lower gardens, the upper gardens contain many fountains distributed among seven broad pools. The landscaping, though, is entirely different, unlike the lower gardens, which are strictly geometric. The upper gardens are not. A few of the fountains have curious sculptures. Like us and join us at Xtreme Collections for more fun and knowledge.